love languages. Now, let me ask you a question. Who enjoys McDonald's fries? McDonald's fries. Like, McDonald's fries. If your hand, hold up. If you enjoy McDonald's fries, put your hand up. If your hand is not up, I'm high-key judging you. High-key judging you. McDonald's has the absolute best fries. I'm not asking a question. I'm stating a fact. I didn't ask. Uh, McDonald's has the best fries. Now, here's the thing. I'm, I'm, you know what makes them so good? They're so salty. Now, yeah, yeah, yes. They're so salty. I love salty. All right. How many of y'all like, y'all like sweets? You like sweets. You're a sweets person. You're a sweets person. Okay, how many of y'all, you're a salty person? You like salt? I can tell. I can tell. I can tell. I, I, I'm a salty guy. I love McDonald's fries because of how salty they are. It adds so much flavor in that seasoning. But here's the thing. Um, imagine getting some McDonald's fries. You're right, right after the blend. You're going home. You know you got to wake up for school early in the morning. Ah, don't nobody want to do that. But you know after blend, I'm going to go get some McDonald's fries. I'm going to order a McFlurry, and it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to get something. Oh, y'all too? I'm going to go. I'm going to get some fries. And at least I'm going to be able to just be like, this is what Jesus is going to be serving in heaven, McDonald's fries. Right? Like you're so excited. You grab, you put your hand in the bag, and you feel that the bag is hot. So you even got to take it out for a second. You're like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You got to get your hand back in there, right? You cool down a little bit. You grab a fry. You're like, ooh, you about to get it. You put it in your mouth, and it don't taste like nothing. Got, have you ever gotten unsalted fries? I don't care who it's from. They're terrible. It is the worst. Why? It's bland. It's nasty. There's no flavor. My son, Malachi, he's two years old, right? And his, his favorite word for when something doesn't taste good is he says, yucky. So bland fries are yucky. They, they, they don't taste like anything. It. Like, what is even the point of this? And that is exactly what our world is like without Christ followers in it. Our world is bland. Our world is yucky. Our world is flavorless. Our world has no purpose, no point without Christ followers being in it. The Bible actually says that you are the salt of the earth. You are the seasoning of your home. You're the seasoning of your campus. You're the seasoning of your family. You are the seasoning of your friend group. It is because of you, if you are a Christ follower, that everywhere you go, anybody that's around you, it is good just because you showed up. Look to the person next to you and say, you good because I'm next to you. You good because I'm over there sitting next to you. That, that's exactly it. You make the world better. The blend is such a dope spot right now because you showed up here tonight. That's what the Bible says you and I are supposed to do. Our job as a Christ follower is to bring God's flavor into the world. Otherwise, it would be bland. It would be pointless. But God says, no, there's so much flavor that I have for you. There's some, even if you're white, there's so much flavor that is packed in you. There's, hey, Will, you'll be okay. There's, there's so much flavor, so much flavor that God has passed in you. He said, you are my way of flavoring this world. Here, here's one way that I would put it while we're in this love languages series. I'd say this, Christians are God's way to have physical touch with the world. We're over here, we're talking love languages. We've talked about quality time. Right, spending time with one another. We, we've talked about words of affirmation, expressing how we feel to people. This idea of physical touch, you being the salt of the world, you being the seasoning of your campus and of your friend group is God's way of having a physical touch on wherever you go. Because you walked in, God walked in. Because you walked in, hope walked in. Because you walked in, joy walked in. Because you walked in, Jesus walked in. It changes things when you walk in the room and we're a Christ follower. Things change. You are salty on purpose. See, some of y'all been called salty y'all whole life and you thought it was a bad thing. You are salty on purpose. Salty to show others how great God is. And here's the thing. Um, as you're expressing love languages, there's this acronym that's out there called PDA. And it's not what y'all see underneath the bleachers at school. 
Oh, my bad. That happened in y'all's campus too. PDA, PDA, public displays of affection. Public displays of affection. Here's the thing. When Pastor Liz and I started dating, there was some PDA that happened in Pastor Liz and I's life. Now, it might not be the PDA that you're doing, but hold on. Let me explain it. Let me explain it. Because some of y'all just went like. <laughs> Here's the thing. We did this crazy thing. Man, we made it Facebook official. <laughs> Listen, I know TikTok the thing, but if it ain't on Facebook, it ain't, it ain't a legit thing. Like, we, we, we was on social media. Here's the thing. I, I started posting pictures with her. She, you know, listen, and, and, and it wasn't no chin down, like, me and my boo thing. No, I was like, you able to see who this was. It, then it got crazy. Then you started, we, we actually tagged each other in our picture. Whoa, I know, crazy. We're, we we, we, we got to calm down. We're going to calm down. There, there were some things, there were some things that we did to where we were publicly displaying our affection of each other. It wasn't inappropriate. It didn't have to go to that level. There was boundaries that was on it, but there was a way of expressing outwardly an inward decision that we had already decided to make. So basically what we were doing is, I don't want to have an in-the-closet relationship. Have you ever had, like, oh, you, you was talking with somebody? Some of y'all literally just looked down when I said that. Boy, I'm so sorry. Y'all going to feel called out. And, and anybody ever have, like, you had a relationship that y'all was talking, but you couldn't let nobody know? And you're literally, you're literally walking around like somebody's like, man, I can't even believe Billy said it. If your name is Billy, I'm sorry. I can't even believe Billy did it. It's like, yeah, I mean, Billy's crazy. Meanwhile, Billy, I can't wait to see you later. <laughs> right, like you're, 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 you're going all the way in there, right? Like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. With my relationship with Pastor Liz, I loved her way too much to keep that thing private. I was proud of the love that I have still for my wife. I, I still like her. I was so proud. I'm so proud of that love. Here's the thing, though. I'm proud of the love that I have for Jesus, too. I don't have to keep that in the back. It doesn't have, I don't have to be an in-the-closet Christian. I can be out and I can be bold. There's public displays of affection that we're able to have. And so what is our PDA towards Jesus? We talked about what that was with maybe a significant other. Maybe you're holding hands. Oh. Maybe you're sitting at the lunchroom and you're actually touching elbows. But you know, like, when, when you're still in the talking phase, you can't let anybody know, so you're just touching knees underneath the table. Just, Ladies, make sure you shave. That'd be disgusting. Like, you, you, you go, like, you, there, there's all these different ways that we do this, that we do this thing of PDA, right? But what does it look like when it comes to Jesus? May Maybe, maybe some PDA, some public displays of affection are when you and I come to church. Where I'm being, I'm showing up. My face is here. I, I'm putting myself out there saying that my, pre, I support, by showing up, I'm saying I somewhat support what is going on. That is a public display of affection. You're already doing that for Jesus right now. Some other ways, may, but serving as a student volunteer. How is that a public display of affection? Because I serve those that I love. And so whenever I love you, it is my joy to serve. I serve my wife because I love her. It ain't nothing for me to go out and do something for her. Why? Because that is my shouty. That, that's my girl. I, I love doing something for her. The Bible actually says this, that as Christ followers, as Christians, you and I are not supposed to be consumers where we just show at the table, we eat whatever the pastor is giving us, and then we go and we leave. The Bible says that you and I are supposed to be producers. So what are you producing in the life of other people? Or are you just eating off of my leftovers? What are you doing in order to help engage your faith? Are you just okay with sitting on the sidelines? At least I got my picture taken in the jersey. No, Jesus said, I want you to get on the field. Go out here and do something. If we're doing this thing together, if you're showing up at the practices or the team huddles like at a church, if you're going over your playbook, which is the Bible, you're doing everything that you can in order to get out there on that field. If you're having conversations with the coach, which is through prayer, then you better believe that God wants you to be on that field, which takes us serving. Serving is important. It's not for man. It's for God. My lifestyle is supposed to be a life of service. Here's another one. Another way of having public displays of affection 
It's through baptisms. It's the same that we're doing next week. I'm so excited for baptisms next week. We got to, if you don't come on Wednesday night next week, I encourage you, come on Wednesday night, whether you're getting baptized or whether you're not, because that's going to be a party. Uh, we're we're going to be having fun and celebrating those. We're doing them on Sunday also. We're going to be celebrating at both. It's going to be awesome. But here's the thing. Here, here's what baptism is. It's a public display of an inward decision. After I've accepted Jesus into my life, my next step is to go public. After I've accepted this relationship into my life, I don't want to just hide it and hold back. My next step is to go out there and be public with my faith. Even Jesus understood the power of baptisms. In, in John, the Bible says that Jesus himself got baptized. And it was after his baptism that his ministry began to start that God said, well, or this is my son in who I am well pleased. Even Jesus got baptized. You get baptized. You serve. You read your Bible. You pray. That's you being just like Jesus. Watch out. You might actually get good at it. You might actually start enjoying it. It might actually start changing your life. This idea of PDA is something that you and I are supposed to be you pursuing Jesus makes the world all better around you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, the Bible says this. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be what? Salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. It says if you and I, Lose the thing that adds flavor to life, which is Jesus in our life, then we're useless. Then I'm literally doing homework for no reason. Then I'm literally being told to clean my room for no reason. Then I'm walking through this life and I'm wondering, what is my purpose here? Why am I even doing that? I hear from so many, especially juniors and seniors in high school, I hear, Pastor Caleb, yo, like, bro, I'm stressed out. Like, I kind of know what I want to do with my life, but I don't know what my purpose is in life. And I don't know what decisions I'm supposed to make. And those are some big things to decide. But this verse literally said, let me tell you why you're here. You're here to make sure that people know that God is the only thing that can bring your life full of flavor. Everything else would be bland. That's what you're here for, and that's exactly what I'm here for. You are supposed to be salty. No attitude. But you're supposed to be salty. People need your saltiness. You know why? Anybody, after you get done eating those McDonald's french fries, you reach over, get your hand on a big 32-ounce drink, you pull it in. Is it sweet tea? Is it, is it, is it Coke? Is it Sprite? Okay. It's neither. Fruit punch. And so you so you so you, so you get you get that big drink and now you just start drinking. Here's the thing, you weren't thirsty before, but after you've had all that salt, yo, I need something to quench this thirst. I, I didn't have it before that salt, but now that I had that, I, I need something else over here. So what am I gonna do? The Bible says this, John chapter 7, verse 37. On the lat hold up. I want y'all to know this in the Bible. I'm, I'm gonna read it straight. Read it straight from this thing here. It says this, on the last days of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. If anybody is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. I know we had, we were just joking around and we said Sprite and we said Sweet Tea and we said Coke. Well, nobody said Coke, I did. And we said Fruit Punch, I see. We, we said all these different things and Jesus is the only one that can be all things to everybody. All in one thing. His name is Jesus. He said, I need you, I need you to be the salt of the earth because once people get some saltiness in their life, they're going to need to drink. And the reason why you're being salty is so that you can point them back to me so that I can come and I can refresh them. This thing right here is, um, this is 50 pounds. This is not a joke. This is a 50-pound 
salt block. If anybody wants this after the blend, you're more than welcome to have it. This is a 50 pound, unless you're in middle school, I don't trust you. Um, this is a 50 pound salt block. And here's the thing, if, you, if you've ever been in FFA, Elijah, if you've ever been in FFA or if, you, if you've ever walked around with, with uh, cattle or some cowboys or, or out on a farm, you'll know exactly what this is. Um, they put this out for cattle and the cattle know that that tastes really, really good. That's like taking you to Twisty Treat. Like, you, you and I, we're going we gonna to get in trouble. Y- y'all don't like Twisty Treat? I'm getting the eyes. Uh. Uh. Jesus likes Twisty Treat. So, y'all go, so that's, like, that's like going to your favorite ice cream spot and, and, and putting it out. That's what that is for cattle. And so cattle, what they're going to do is they're going to go up and they're going to lick that salt block. And they're going to keep licking. They keep, y'all ever heard, like, the thing, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Yeah, they play, how many licks does it take to get at the center of a salt block? Uh, it's a funny game. Um, but they're, they're going to go up, they're going to lick it, and they're going to keep going after it, keep going after it. But here's the thing, they're going to get really, really thirsty. And so then from here, they're going to go and they're going to start drinking water. They drink so much more water after getting a taste of this salt block than they would have on their own, and then it helps them gain weight. And if you know anything about cattle, the bigger they are, the more money you get. So it keeps growing, it keeps growing. And so here's what I want you to know. God wants people to be fat in life. God wants people to be fat. He wants us to be powerful, healthy, and transformed. God wants you to be fat in life. Here's how this is gonna happen. I need you to get in some of me. I need you to be salty enough to point people back to me. And they get around you in the classroom and they're like, man, what is different about that girl? She has some boundaries. And although they offended me at first, I actually respect those boundaries now. And I see the way that they walk and conduct themselves. And somebody talked bad on their name and they didn't go gossiping back about them. And somebody started doing wrong and nothing else happened. I see the standards that they live in their life. They're not perfect, but man, there's something different. There's a saltiness of you, of me, that becomes attractive to people. And when they ask, hey, what, what's so different about you? What is it that makes it seem like you have your life together? after we let them know that we don't know what we're doing. So admit, it's this Jesus thing. And I bet if you give it a shot, you'll actually enjoy it too. We've said this here before, most people, they're gonna get to you before they ever get to him. They're gonna look at you and see how's that Christian thing actually living. Sounds good when them old folk talk about it. But what about in high school? What about in middle school? Can you actually do this Jesus thing and be in the fashion? Can you actually do this Jesus thing and love music? Can you actually do this Jesus thing and get money? Can you actually do this Jesus thing and win championships? Can you do that? Michigan did. A lot of y'all have been doing this on y'all's campus. I screwed up and somehow I'm stumbling my way into it. I don't know how except to tell you it's a Jesus thing. Jesus wants us to be fat. He wants us to be powerful. He wants us to be healthy. And he wants you and I to be transformed. That only happens, though, when we get closer to him. We are the salt of the earth. Being around us should make people want to get to know Jesus even more. So how is your PDA? How is your public displays of affection? There's five areas that I would say you and I, as a Christ follower, we have an obligation to control. We have an obligation to watch out for this now. Watch out for this. Like, it's one thing, it's one thing, like, think back when you, when you first started playing sports. Like, we had a lot of soccer players in the room. I'm thinking of y'all. Shout out to soccer players. Thinking of them. And my son is two years old. I'm assuming by, like, you know, two years old and five months, he's going to be playing soccer. He's going to be messy. You know what I'm saying? Ronaldo. Can y'all not, y'all don't even play soccer. Ugh. So he, my, my son, I know I'm going to put him in soccer at some point. And I know that for the first little bit, that boy ain't going to know how to kick no ball. He ain't going to know how to pass it. He, he ain't going to know what to do. But through time, it would be a shame. It would be a shame for a high school senior soccer player 
to have the same soccer abilities as my two-year-old son. As time goes, I should be able to grow in my craft. It's the same thing in our faith walk. There should be evidence of growth in your relationship and in your walk with Jesus. There's five areas that I think you and I need to make sure we watch out for. It says, number one, my effort. My effort, how is my effort in school? How's my effort with my relationship? What does my effort in school have to do with my relationship with Jesus? God says, give me a lifestyle of worship. Let everything you do praise the Lord. How can I praise God with half effort? Liz doesn't want half of my love. So I give love to her and I give love to somebody else. See how long I'm alive. She gonna kill me. She gonna kill me. She don't, she don't want half of my love. So then why do I think that it's okay to give God half of my love? Where's my effort? Why do I think it's okay to give everybody else? He said, give your all. Whatever you do, just lean into it, dive in. Don't like, you know when you're getting into a cold thing of water, you start like going down the stairs. And like once that thing hits your ankles, you're like, oh no, you, you kind of back out. No, they said, how do you get into a cold water? You better dive in. You better trace something. Get in there. Like, you, you better do whatever it is that you got to do in order to make sure. Because I can't just ease my way into this because it will be too easy for me to get back out. I need to dive in. So where is my effort? Anything that I'm involved in, I want to do it with the best of my ability. Second thing is this. How's your attitude? Answer it if you want to. Here's, here's, here's how I would encourage you. Jesus comes to change you from the inside out. He cares about your attitude. He cares about your attitude because you are supposed to be, I am supposed to be the salt of the earth. He doesn't want us to be salty with people. He wants us to be a seasoning for people. That's why he uses salt. Salt tastes good. My attitude getting out of line does not taste good. It'll put a bitter taste in somebody's mouth and say, oh, no, all Christians are mean. All Christians judge. All Christians do this. How is my attitude? Supposed to control my attitude. Third thing is this, how are my decisions? What decisions am I making? What am I choosing to do or not to do? The decisions that I make carry such a big impact. Number four, what's my integrity like? Does my word actually mean anything? You know the Bible actually says that a good name is better than riches. It doesn't mean that the name your mama pops picked for you. It doesn't mean your government name. It means your integrity, it means your character. That when I say I'm going to do something, I'm actually going to do it. And this last one, how are your words? Words are PDA. Words are a public display of affection. How am I using my words? Bob says that there's life and death in the power of the tongue. I can use my words to build people up or I can use my words to tear people down. Can't pray my way out of it. That's a decision you and I get to make. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says this. Matthew 5, 16, it says this. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. By opening up to others. By allowing people to get to see how salty you are. By allowing people to see what God is doing through you. It's going to allow people to get to see who God can be to them. Everybody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. In your love languages, we've been talking, this love languages are not just how we express love to other people and how we like to receive love to other people, but they are also ways that God will express his love to us and also how we are able to express our love to God. So how is your public display of affection towards Jesus? Do people know you're a Christ follower? Not because I'm being weird and I walk up to somebody and I'm like, Hey, my name's Caleb, and I love Jesus. Like, no, that's weird. Don't do that. That's a lot. Like, that just hurt my ears. Like, don't do that. Like, we, we, we don't want to be extra. But, man, like, it, the way that I walk, the way that I conduct myself, I'm not trying to be light-skinned. I just got this thing called Jesus that's with me. And, there, and there's a way, some of y'all just catching on, there's a way, there's a way for me to do life, enjoy life, ball out, crush education, have the relationships ball out of business, and still do this thing with Jesus. How's your PDA with God? Does it make others want to know God, or does it push people away from God? 
that verse that we started off with, it says that you and I are the salt of the earth. Put it in my turn. It's the Caleb Thomas version. You and I are the adobo of the earth. You and I, you and I are the Lowry seasoning. What do I for you? You and I are the complete seasoning. We're the garlic powder. I don't know what you want to use. Here's the thing. You and I, you and I are the thing that enhances. We're the thing that enhances the flavor that God is wanting to do here on this earth. And how we display our public love of affection towards God is going to dictate who else gets to join this Jesus party with you and with me. Let's pray. Father God, man, we love you so much. So grateful uh, that you're a God that is actually lovable. Like there, there is an ability to actually like you. You're not this mean, judging, crazy kind of a God that we are being forced into this relationship with you that we don't even want to be in. That would be called an abuse. But the Bible said that you're a gentleman, that you give your grace and you give your mercy before you ever even ask anything of us. That while we were still sinners, Jesus, you still died on the cross for our sins. And so God, I pray that you help us stand bold and stand strong in our relationship with you, that we're not being this in the closet type of Christian where I'm a Christian on Wednesday nights and then that's it. But God, while I'm walking through my school campus, when I'm hanging out on the weekends, when I'm at the movies, when I'm at the ball field, no matter where I'm at, God, would you help me express who I am towards you? Not in a way that can be weird, but in a way that will show people there is something different. And it's not me, it's you. God, would you help my life? Would you help the life of all these students that are in here that have bought into you? Would you help it be a mirror that every time people look at us, they're able to see another reflection of how great you are of a God that can, you, you can use somebody who screws up often in order to show who a perfect God is. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <laughs>